Soil School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by the Ontario Soil Network and the Mosaic Company. Werner Tobin here on the Soil School today. I am in Tara, Ontario, and I'm talking soil with Ken Schaus. Ken, how's it going? Good. Th hey. Thanks for coming. Hey, I appreciate the invitation. I want to talk about your farm here in Tara, but obviously your operation's a lot bigger than that. Give us a snapshot of it all. Sure. So we're in the cattle business, and uh, we're also in the farming business. So the two work together very well. Uh, 50 years in the cattle business, I work with my father. We feed cattle, we're in the order buying business. Uh, we graze cattle in the peninsula north of here. And uh, we ship to two, plant, two federal plants here in Ontario, and uh, we ship cattle every week. Awesome. Now, a big part of what you do is soil health, and that's why you're here today. And yeah. I want to talk about you know, a lot of aspects of what you do, but you grow a lot of diverse crops, and diversity is such a key for you. Talk about your rotations. Sure. So our, our rotation 10 years ago was corn and soybeans, and that's slowly moved to corn, wheat, and soybeans. Uh, wheat's a big part of our rotation. Now we're growing more wheat than soybeans, and we're growing more wheat than corn. So we've, we've brought the corn acreage down and uh, we've replaced that with, uh, with more wheat, more cereals. Uh, we're growing some cereal rye for the malting market. Um, some hay is in our rotation now as well and some of the lighter ground. And uh, yeah, it's, it's diversified a bit, yeah. For sure. Talk about um, tillage. I mean, mostly no-till, no but a, a wee little bit of tillage. Yep, so 10 years ago we were Full tillage, plowing, fall tillage, uh, lots of passes, lots of diesel fuel. And uh, we've slowly moved to eliminating any shanks in the ground. Um, we're not turning up any stones. The last uh, four years, we've not done any fall tillage as well. And in the spring, we're down to pretty well one pass tillage uh, ahead of our corn ground. Now, one thing I see a lot of here is cover crops, and there's very little of, uh, of your ground that doesn't see cover crops. This is something pretty new to you. I mean, eight years ago, you weren't doing cover crops, yep. but tell us a little bit about how you got started here. You're really plugged into a really smart network of people who really helped you get going. Sure. Eight years ago, we were putting uh, red clover down, and that was our cover crop, but we were having too many, too many bare patches, too many misses, inconsistent stands. And then when we wanted to bale our straw, we had this in the good spots, we had this great stand of red clover, it seemed, and the straw wasn't drying. So we ended up uh, taking the red clover out. Um, that hasn't been a mistake. Uh, we've gone to a full cover crop system on 3,500 acres of ground, 2,000 of which is owned, and 1,500 is long-term leased. We're taking uh, cover crops, and we're putting it in to all the acres. Wow. So wow, after that's... weed is our big setup, like this right here at Terra. Now you took wheat off of this field, yep. a nice yield, and tell us what you, what you put in here. Yep, so the minute the bales were gathered here, we, we went in and no-till. So we do have the uh, volunteer wheat, which has come back, um, but what we don't have is weeds. We've got a 12-way mix here. We did get a frost event here two weeks ago, so that took out the uh, sorghum, also took out the buckwheat. But uh, everything else is doing quite, quite fine here. It uh, looks quite healthy. We've got two different types of radish. There's oats, there's sunflowers, there's peas, there's vetch, there's three types of clover in here. Um, I'm probably missing something else. There's kale, the big leaves here, that's kale. And <clears throat> we've got ground cover here and for about $40 per acre. $40 per acre. And what's it bring into your soil, Ken? Yep, so I guess with our soil here and like all the farms, it's we're seeing improvements. And the, those improvements are not only yield, but we're seeing less tillage, you know, one pass of tillage in three years' time. We're doing, uh, and that's a head of corn. That's this, this ground here will get worked up uh, with a Lemkin Heliodor. So we, we actually have a Lemkin Reuben and a Lemkin Heliodor. Mm -hmm. They do, they're big wide machines. They do 40 acres an hour. Last year we didn't even use the uh, Lemkin Reuben. We're just one pass with the Heliodor. We can easily stay ahead of our planter. Um, the beans are all no-tilled uh, into corn stalks as well. Our ground's getting so mellow. Um, I'm not a soil scientist, but I can tell when ground is mellow and healthy and smells good and plants nice. And when the crops come up, they're coming up fast. Uh, we're seeing equipment holding capacity here. We're seeing water holding capacity. Um, our diesel fuel bill is 
significantly less. Um, we've got nice smooth fields to work in all the time as well. Talk about innovation. I know you know you have uh, you've planted green. Um, Cereal rye has become a bigger part of your business, especially after soybeans. How important is innovation? Obviously, it started with cover crops. Yep, so we have our own certified crop advisor in-house. He uh, works full-time for us uh, on the farming side of it and with the cattle as well. And, uh, you know, we're all on the same page. Um, we're not, we're not uh, trying to reinvent the wheel. We're, we're good at learning from other experts, networking with people of like minds who have tried things and are trying different things and we're sharing ideas with those people. Um, the cereal rye, not only after soybeans, but ahead of soybeans as well. So when you're planting soybeans into a standing uh, cereal rye field at uh, boot stage and then you crimp it at, uh, at head height on June, 5th, or June 4th or 5th, uh, those are some of our highest yields this year. I want to wrap this up with uh, some thoughts on you know your overall approach here uh, you mentioned before we got talking here you know you're seeing more three inch rain events you know drought um it's getting tougher and tougher and you know i guess your philosophy a lot of it is, is building resiliency into your soils yeah. you know the the three inch rain events no one can argue that we're seeing more of them and with full tillage programs and more tillage we're, we were seeing way too much uh topsoil leaving the farms, um, brown water leaving the farms. Uh, we're, this farm is in a drinking water protection zone. It farms right, the Sable River cuts right between the, the 275 acres of crop ground here. Um, we've got the town of Terra one mile away. We can't have water leaving the farms anymore. We can't have nutrients leaving the farms. We're paying for those nutrients, so why not capture them you know, right where they are and, and make better use of them. A lot of this cover crop here that's growing will be cycled into next year's uh, available uh, fertility. Yeah. And, you know, having it leave the farm, something that you paid for, um, you know, we're getting nutrient recycling, fixing nitrogen as well. Like, you know, we're, we're mining P and K out of the ground, making it plant available for next year. Uh, we get a three inch rain here. I'm not worried about the topsoil leaving. Uh, this farm is tiled, but I think there's a there's actually a slowing effect in a water holding capacity above that tile zone as well. Yeah. And we're seeing crops able to handle the drier spells and able to handle the wetter spells. We're, we're not seeing soil crusting and, and things like that either. Yeah. So those and are you, all positives. So Ken, you got the cost of cover crops. Yep. You've got the cost of putting it in the ground. What's the return on the investment? Yep. So we've got, the, we've got the nutrient cycling. We've got the, the water holding capacity. We've got some drought resistance that's getting built into the ground. Um, we're getting some free nitrogen out of the cover crop mix as well. And there's other things, there's, there's ground cover, there's weed suppression. Um, is, it, is it worth $40 an acre? I, th I think it's money well spent. We're, we're spending this money once every three years too. You know, after soybeans are going in with no-till wheat, after the wheat, the cover crop like this, after corn, we no-till soybeans in and uh, we leave our corn stalks stand and we're baling some of those corn stalks as well so that uh, goes into the cattle pens and comes back as in this particular instance compost but uh, for the most part it goes back onto the farmland that we're farming. So Ken, through your cattle operation you generate a lot of manure. Mm -hmm. Tell us how that fits into the system. Yep, so we have the liquid cattle manure which in the springtime goes out to the potato farmers locally close to the barns and then the solid pack manure, we're, we're composting it now. So this past year, we, the crew made a, over 7,000 tons of compost. And those compost piles, one of which is here, uh, that's going on uh, onto the wheat ground now, onto the cover crop. So this cover crop will see compost here in the next couple of weeks. And, but we wanted it to give a, get a, have a chance to grow here. Um, you know, manure is a valuable resource. We're trying to use it to its fullest potential. Uh, the distance from this farm, this is as far north as we go, and uh, being able to truck compost up here versus manure, uh, we're piling it on a, on a farm here in a small footprint, and it will be spread with uh, some pretty accurate accuracy as well. The, uh, the guy that does it for us, um, rate control, right to the pound to the acre, um, we feel we're getting our best bang for the buck out of it. Ken, tell me a little bit more about the network that you use to get your cover crops going. I know you talked to a lot of people on so social media yep. and tapped into a lot of resources. Yep, so 
went to my first Farm Smart conference and listened to Mike Buse talk about his cover crop program. I, I talked to Mike about, you know, oh, we're too far north. And he said, no, you're not too far north. He says, you are far south compared to a lot of people. So, you know, we, he said, if, if you don't do anything other than after wheat, put in some oats and some peas and maybe some radish. He said, that's all you got to do and you will see a difference. And that was our motivation to get started. Um, that was, that seems like a long time ago. And I've had a lot of lessons, you know, I'm still learning. Um, but, you know, here in Ontario, there's no excuse to say, well, we can't find information. There's so many good people that know what they're talking about. Um, the Omafra network, uh, people like Amber Halen, you know, it's just endless. There's so much good information out there. And if you can't find those people, there's social media. You know, this, the space bar years ago, when you typed in cover crops, there might have been one feed or one thing per day or one, two or three per week. Now it's 20 or 30 a day. Mm -hmm. And soil health is a big, big thing. And you can talk, find somebody that's talking about soil health on the other side of the globe. And, you know, maybe it doesn't relate exactly to what you're doing here in Ontario, but a lot of it can. And a lot of it can be brought, the thought process and the, you know, the, the way we do it. And that a lot of those lessons can be learned from people all over the place. So Ken, hey, a great story. Thanks for taking the time. Uh, thanks for the invite. Um, thanks for uh, stopping by and joining us on Soil School. Good to have you. Awesome.